welcome everyone. And um, thanks, Fran, for sharing that I've been doing this for decades. Um, yes, I am a little bit on the older side uh, for talking about Crown or uh, CAD CAM technology, but um, never too old to learn something. Um, so welcome to Zon Academy, everybody, and our follow-up webinar, part two, if you will, entitled How to Design and Manufacture Implant Supported Provisionals. Uh, we're going to be using the Trusana material from Meyerson's. Uh, it's, it's their 3D print resin and desk implant components. Um, as Fran mentioned, my name is Tony Sprigliano. I'm a co-founder of Broadway Dental in Feasterville, Pennsylvania, which is outside the Philadelphia area. And um, I've been in business, well, I was in business for 35 years and been a technician for 45. Um, I've been a ceramist for most of my career and currently am partner of the Crown and partner and Crown and Bridge Manager of the Dental Lab in, in uh, Bristol, Pennsylvania. Just a brief history of the Dental Lab. Um, it's a conglomeration or an assembly of, of local labs that uh, my partner, Jay Collins, has uh, acquired over the last number of years. Um, and we have a, a wealth of knowledge and experienced technicians in the building, um, as well as uh, a lot of young up and coming talent. So our, our talk today, again, we're gonna be focusing on the manufacture of uh, implant supported provisionals. Um, we're going we're gonna to be looking at an all on X case. Um, and uh, this is a little bit a little bit of photos of us and my partner, uh, Jay Collins and myself in the lab. Um, and we are a full service laboratory. Uh, we do everything from porcelain veneers uh, to full mouth reconstructions, uh, implant uh, surgical surgical guides. Uh, so we, we got a lot of a uh, lot of experience and a lot of a uh, lot of knowledge in, in the building. So just a little bit of review of what we covered last week. I, I don't want to spend a lot of time um, on this, but if you you can go to to Zon Academy um, website and uh, look for part one. Um, Sue uh, von van Kinsberg, and I'm sorry, Sue. Um, Presented with me last week. Last week, Sue is the CD is a CDT. Uh, she works for Meyerson. She's been involved with a lot of the um, you know research and and practical use of the material. Um, if you'd like to get some information about the science behind the material, um, I would suggest you take a look at last week's webinar. Um, it'll be very informative and helpful. So. As we know, Trusana is manufactured by Meyerson Dental. Uh, Meyerson Dental has been in the business of manufacturing dental products for over 70 years. Um, they're a well, well-known company, long-term long dental manufacturer, uh, mainly in the field of removable products. Um, you might recognize some of their other uh, famous products like Dorsetal, uh, VisiClear, Doraflex and Kenson Denture Teeth. Um, they're truly an innovative company as they're always on the cutting edge of technology. Um, Trusana in particular, some, some really distinct advantages over uh, the use of PMMA. Um, two times the flexural strength uh, than PMMA, uh, which is really, pr really pretty amazing. Um, it also has Two times, you know, it is two times more wear resistant than PMMA. And one really key feature is that it's three times stronger when wet, which obviously makes it a very uh, popular uh, material to be using in the mouth. Um, the other thing that we can talk about is the, the moisture absorption. Uh, Chuchana has a very low moisture absorption as compared to the other, other materials available, um, less than three or three percent, and as compared to a denture tooth, which is, I'm sorry, three tenths of a percent, um, a denture tooth at, at 0.4, and the current generation of 3D materials at two percent. The other part of our uh, lecture today or presentation 
um, will be the use of the desk implant components. Um, for anyone that's been working with implants, um, you, you should be well familiar with the name DES. Um, they're a worldwide leader uh, in manufacturing of dental and medical components. Um, you know, one thing that drew us to using DES components was the fact that they are FDA approved um, on most of their products. And I would really suggest that you, again, go to DES's website, uh, take a look at their, their claims about FDA, um, and uh, read up on and do some research on your own so you, know, you can feel comfortable in, in what you're producing in your lab. Um, this is also a very cost-effective product. Um, you know, the pr their, their prices on their materials are, are very competitive and, and very fair. And, um, you know, definitely worth looking at as a, as a um, choice instead of using a original manufacturer's part. Um, over the years, I've been a big component of, of using original manufacturer's parts, and we still do that um, when it's requested um, by our clients. Uh, but if, they're, if they are open to trying some other, other uh, components, uh, that's is surely a company that you could take a look at. Um, they have a wide range, a huge range, actually, of compatibility uh, with all the leading Manufacturing manufacturer companies out there, um, they they make a whole line of, of products um, for for each implant, um, whether it be temporary abutments, tie bases, uh, millable blanks, uh, impression copings, all the tools, all the drivers, uh, just about anything that you can think. Of. Uh, this also offers a lifetime warranty on their components and also a lifetime warranty on the implant that if you man manufacture a restoration that you use a desk component um, with, you can, um, and, and if you have a, an issue or a problem, um, again, the, the, they will cover the, the uh, warranty of the implant. Um, again, I would really suggest go to their website, read all the particulars about that, and uh, just familiarize you, yourself with um, with their their theories and and um, on on that particular thing. Okay, not to waste any more time, let's get into our case. Um, so this is how the case presented to us. Um, it was an abutment level impression using this multi unit abutments. Uh, we, um, we obviously poured a soft tissue model, um, and the one step that I kind of regret that I didn't include in this presentation was the fabrication of a, a verification jig. So anytime we do any kind of uh, fall on X or even, even a zirconia, a, a smaller zirconia restoration, we like to, to do a verification jig um, just to verify that our model is accurate um, and we you know, won't run into any uh, catastrophic problems later, later on in the process. Uh, here's some of the components um, that we'll be using um, in, in, in the uh, fabrication of this case. Obviously, on the left there is your uh, multi-unit scan flag. Um, in the middle, we have the multi-unit tie base with the screw and the multi-unit analogs. And here you just see the multi-unit um, scan flag on the model in place. Um, you, you know, if, if anyone is familiar with the design process, you don't need to get a, a scan flag for every, every implant location. It's okay to move it from one to the next, um, as long as, you know, obviously you're dealing with the same, the same restorative platform. Okay, just some little bit of information about multi-unit abutments from DES. Um, you know, one, one key factor, um, I think that it makes it much better than, than an original manufacturer's part is the, um, the screw head. Uh, you know, a lot of, in, in some parts, you'll, you'll notice that with the retaining screw for the, for the overcase, um, part, of the, part of that um, thread is, is cut out, um, which, which needs to be done to pro provide room for the, for the driver to get through. Um, for the retaining screw of the of the abutment, 
So on, on a desk uh, multi-unit, the whole top of that multi-unit will be uh, totally, the threads will be totally intact. Um, and your screw placement for your, uh, for your abutment itself will have a straight path uh, down into the implant. Um, here's just an example. I believe this is the Nobel page of, of their catalog. Um, you know, they have external hex compatibility, uh, the conical connection compatibility, and also the trilobe compatibility and available in different cuff heights, um, different angulations as most are 17 and 30, um, and obviously also the straight ones. Um, so you, you'll, you'll find this kind of variety for just about any of the um, manufacturers that they, that they support. Um, a little note on their tie bases. They have a, a little variety of tie bases to choose from. Um, obviously, the one that we're using is, is specifically made for the multi-unit platform, um, but they they have a, a couple of others as well. Um, the angle tie base on the left there is for a um, an angle screw channel restoration. is a little bit unique in that it's able to be accessed from 360 degrees. Uh, so when you're placing your your um, tie base on your model, uh, the low the, the rotation of it is not as critical as it is with others, uh, where you can only access it from one or two um, you know clicks around the implant. Um, they make a line of tie bases for the uh, CEREC uh, users as well. Uh, the elliptic base tie base is is I think their newest addition to the line. Um, it's, it's unique in that it's specifically designed for a, a lower anterior or even maybe an upper lateral incisor where there's really a tight space that you need to access. Uh, so it is slightly ovoid in shape. Um, it's hard to tell from that photo, but it does have a, a buckle and lingual side to it and two, two flatter sides on the mesial and distal. Uh, so again, if, the, if you have a tight lower incisor uh, where it's difficult to get a traditional tie base in there, um, the use of this uh, elliptic base is really um, a, a great idea in their So let's let's talk about our scan. So in the lab here, we we're using uh, three shape software, um, and this has libraries available for three shape exocad and also dental links so i think it just about covers all the all the major software uh, design softwares out there uh, so you shouldn't have any problem with uh, you know accessing what you need um, this is our initial um, scan page so uh, we have our uh, tie base in place on the model um, just to just to give you an idea of, of what that's going to look like. Um, you can see this, the drop down menu in the software. I hope you, hope you can see that actually. I'm sorry about the, the photo, it wasn't a little bit, um, a little more zoomed in there. Um, but there's a whole list of drop downs um, to choose from. And uh, again, with as comprehensive a product offering as, as they have, um, I really suggest that you, you know, familiarize yourself with their catalog. Uh, there is uh, lots of tutorials and guides on their website, so you can you can go there um, and uh, actually you know go through a case and make look at the particular uh, components that you need, um, and they'll uh, you know kind of walk you through um, the process of choosing the right components and the right scan play. After our setup is done, um, we do move on to the segmentation process where we're identifying uh, our abutments and our ponics. Um, again, I'm not, not going to spend a lot of time in the, the CAD part of it. Um, I'm sure we all have uh, CAD designers and CAD people in our labs that are uh, much more versed um, at doing this and much more comfortable. Um, than I am, so um, you know, I as I do, I rely on on our CAD department heavily. 
Um, so uh, I, I leave that, that's their expertise. So I, I leave that to them. Um, the, the, the case itself, we, you know, we, we love to do a diagnostic wax up um, and kind of get our case set um, to exactly what we need to do. I mean, the use of a study model is, is okay. Uh, I like the fact that we can, you know, remove the diagnostics from the model um, and, and position it back and forth. So there's, there's no um, difficulty in, in lining up a scan of a, of a study model. Um, you know, you can do a three-point alignment, uh, but I've seen them go awry sometimes. So I, I like the idea of being able to, uh, to do a wax try and we, we will also send this to the doctor um, for, um, for evaluation, both aesthetically and, uh, and collusion wise. So you, you can see the severity of the case we're dealing with here. I mean, it has, patient had a lot of uh, ridge resorption and you, you can see that despite where that implant is placed um, and, that, and that lingual to that premolar, um, and, that, and that's where they are on, on pretty much, um, you'll see the two anteriors in a, in a little bit. Uh, they're very lingually placed. So this, this case had to be built out a lot facially in order to get you know, just a little bit of, of overjet, um, I'm sorry, overbite. Uh, so uh, it's, it's a material, again, strength of Trusana is, is something that's key here. Um, and it's a perfect application for a case like this. Um, so once our, our wax up is, is scanned in, um, this is, we, we call it our pre-prep. Um, so this is our diagnostic and this is how, this is what we're going to use um, in order to bring our library teeth into the, into this, into the design um, and then morph, morph our teeth uh, to, to our, morph our um, library teeth uh, to the uh, to the setup or, or to our pre prep, um, and you can see our, our our teeth are in position here um, for our anatomy design, and then the next step, um, excuse me, will be to bring uh, the gingiva design into it. Um, you, know, you 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 mark the model. Um, you can see the blue dots on the model, outlining exactly the extent and extension that you would like the pink to be brought to. Um, and then the software kind of adapts it to the tooth um, on its own. Um, and you'll have plenty of opportunity to tweak that in your, um, in your, in your next stages if you need, if you need to. Um, here's our scanned um, model with, with tie bases in place. Um, you can see there's gonna be a little bit of path of insertion issue um, that we will address later on. And you can see the final uh, design and um, of, of our case, and it has full gingiva on it. Um, and again, the severity, the overjet um, on on this particular case, it's, it's well off the ridge. And you know, it's not not the most ideal situation, um, but you know, you, we're we are all presented with cases like this from time to time. And, you know, it's our job to kind of tackle it and figure out, you know, what the best, best way to handle um, that situation is. So obviously a case like this, you know, we're, we're gonna recommend that a water pick be used for this patient because um, there's definitely gonna be some issues with, with trying to keep it clean in the near future. Um, so I just wanted to show you a little bit of the translucent view of the design um, with the tie base in place. And in, again, you can see the lingual placement of these of these implants. Um, unfortunately, um, the doctor had chosen uh, the the multi units, and um, this is this again. This is what we were faced with. Um, so it's, you know, he wasn't a um, wasn't willing to take that step back in order to maybe use a different angle of abutment. Um, in order to put them in a, in a favor, more favorable position. So this, this is what we have. Once your design is, is finalized and um, you know, you're happy with everything and you know, from time to time, again, we'll send, we'll send our design off to 
uh, photos of the design off to our client and, and, and get his approval for it um, before we start uh, manufacturing. So when we're ready, we're gonna send it to our printer. Um, we're using the Acida Max. Uh, the Acida Max right now is the printer that is validated um, for the Trisana material. Um, as we covered last week, um, you know, there's other printers that are in the process of being validated. Um, and, you know, they're, they're quiet about that. They don't want to, you know, really release um, or give you any hint of what they are, but they, they are on their way. Um, so, you know, in case you don't have one and you don't feel like you need to buy another printer uh, for your laboratory, other, other printers are on the way. Um, as the, the file gets imported into the Asiga software, um, the, the one key thing that we really uh, have to make sure is correct is that 20 degree annulation of the prosthesis. Um, now, in the beginning, when we first started doing these cases, um, we ex experimented with, uh, you know, do we have the, the um, screws connected to the occlusal table? Do we have it connected to the intaglio surface? Um, it, and we felt, and, and after doing some cases and obviously, you know, making mistakes and, 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 and getting some, some bad prints, um, we came up with uh, screwing it on the occlusal surface like that is really the, the, the best way to go about it. <clears throat> the less screws that were near any implant interfaces, um, the better off we were. Um, <coughs> excuse me. We found um, that it was interfering with the fit. So, and um, it was better to, yes, you have you have to clean up the occlusal surface after this is printed, but um, it's better to have it fit um, more intimately with the uh, with the tie bases or with your implant interfaces um, or, or however you're designing the case. Um, then it you know would be to do a little quick cleanup on the occlusal. Um, a lot of these uh, settings that you see here are generated automatically uh, by the uh, by the software. Um, and again, you may have to tweak a couple here and there as you go as you go through. But um, I would you know communicate again with with the SIGA and and get them to um, you know to help you out with that if if you feel like you're not getting the results that you should be. Um, you can see that the, we we forgot to update the material usage on here, and though we, we did not use ultra gray model material. Um, to print this case. Um, I apologize for that, um, but that was just a, uh, an old setting that was on there. So yes, we, uh, we use the hot dog roller. And the reason we're using the hot dog roller is um, Trisana has a pigmentation that's added to it to achieve um, the you know, proper shape. Um, and one thing we, I, failed to mention was the, um, the shades that it is available in. Um, there's six shades right now. Um, there's a bleach shade, uh, A1, A2, A3, uh, B1, and C1. Uh, it's a smart idea, uh, or it's highly recommended actually, to mix the Trisana material very well prior to um, printing a case. Um, so we'll, we'll put it on the hot dog roller uh, maybe for about an hour prior to, uh, if we know we have, you know, cases the next morning um, that we're going to be printing, or if we're printing overnight, you know, we'll, whatever, we'll give it, we'll give it a good hour's worth of time um, on on the roller to make sure that those color pigments are are very nicely um, dispersed through the material, and you get a nice result um, on your print. Um, here, are photos of the case um, coming out of the printer. Um, that's the, 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 on the build plate and you can see all the connections, um, that are made to the bridge and, and yes, you need that many, um, they, they break off very easily. So, you know, don't be alarmed that you got a major, uh, major mess to clean up there. Um, they, they, they snap off and they, they snap off pretty cleanly. Um, after the case is printed. Um, we'll talk about our, our post-printing procedures. 
Um, the first step, oops, sorry about that. The first step is we're gonna put it into a dirty alcohol bath. Now, dirty alcohol bath just means that it's used alcohol. Um, we don't specifically um, make it dirty, but it's just been used before. So it's one minute in the cleaner with, um, with, with dirty alcohol <clears throat> and then 30 seconds in clean alcohol. Um, you don't wanna leave it in the alcohol for too long because the material will tend to dry out a little bit. So um, you know, a minute and 30 seconds is really the trick. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> usually you see the flashlight curing box, um, 12 minutes on each side. Uh, very simple uh, machine. Um, after, after it comes out of the alcohol bath, um, dry it off in, in the unit, 12 minutes, you know, buckle, or I'm sorry, intaglio, 12 minutes on the occlusal surface. Pretty simple process. Um, and then we put it into a water bath, ultrasonic water bath, um, 80 degrees is the prescribed temperature for the water bath. And again, for 12 minutes in, in the water bath. After the case is cleaned up, this is what we look like. Okay, the sprues are, are broken off and you can, if you look real close, you can see all those little projections on there. Um, when, you, when you snap, the, the sprues or the connectors off of the bridge. Um, that's basically with your what you're left with. So it's a it's a fairly easy easy cleanup. Um, it's not as um, as difficult as you might expect, and um, it's you know it, it it finishes off really really nicely. Um, for finishing the case, um, the material is is just very dense, and when you grind on it. You'll you'll feel and just you'll just see the the type of uh, powder that is is left when you're when you're grinding um, how dense it is. Um, I just use conventional burrs to do it. Um, I like the lab carbides. Um, you know, might use a little Fisher burr. Um, you know, diamond disc. You know, a small and a and a large one. Um, but but nothing you know nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, you know, nothing that you have to run out and buy um, in order to finish this material. Um, like I said, it grinds, grinds very easily. And, um, you know, the more, the more work you put into your design and your setup, you know, obviously the less grinding um, you're going to have to do. I think what we did here is we, we did a little preparation or a little reduction on the gingiva area uh, to allow room for our, our characterization later on. Um, so, um, you know, open up your embrasures, define your incisal edges a little bit, um, individualize your teeth um, again, but you get a, a fairly accurate print um, af after the cases, when, when the cases come out of the printer and, and you're ready to go. So um, if, if you're doing a lot of grinding, you find yourself you're, you're doing a lot of grinding, just, I would ask this, you know, just spend a little more time um, with a with design process, okay? Um, here you see the, the tie bases. And um, I just want to note really the, the surface, I'm sorry, the, sur the surface of the tie bases um, are what, what desk calls select grip. Um, and, and they're treated like that at the factory. Um, so they come in um, and I guess if you had anything to compare it to, you could say um, it's a sandblasted surface. Um, but it's done. It's done by desks in, in their facility, and um, you know you don't have to really you know play with mess around with them at all. It provides it increases the bond strength um, up to two hundred percent is what is what they claim. Um, so it's it's really a, a nice feature of them. Um, you know, the, fitting the tie bases into the unit the, the, it may require a little bit of work. I mean, sometimes the uh, the, whole, the holes that are, you know, the tie bases will fit into are, are a little snug, um, but nothing again, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, and for, for us, we like to um, cure or, or you know, uh, loop those tie bases in place with acrylic um, instead of doing cementation. You can do, you can do cementation. There's no, no problem with doing that. 
Um, I just feel like if we can cure them in with acrylic, the acrylic will bond um, to to the the uh, trusana material, and will it'll, it'll bond to the uh, bases as well. Uh, so um, that's that's our our uh, preference. Again, you'll you'll do what you feel comfortable with. Um, you know, there's nothing that says the cementation is wrong. So uh, whatever you're more comfortable. Uh, so here's our bridge fitted to the model, and again, shouldn't uh, shouldn't have to do much work here. But I just like to uh, make sure that there's no no binding um, in the soft tissue areas. Um, that we, the bridge gets fully seated. Um, the conics are, are are relieved if they need to be, um, and we're ready to go. So as we get into the application of gradia, so we're we're using GC gradia material. Um, to, to characterize um, and apply the, the soft tissue um, to, to our bridge. Um, one thing that's very important is any, any area that is going to receive um, radia or you know, your characterization, you want to sandblast it with 50 micron aluminum oxide. Uh, you're going to clean it very well and dry it very well. Okay. And again, any area that's receiving characterization, you're going to apply the GC acrylic primer to those areas. Um, thin, even coat of primer. Uh, one coat is, is all it really takes. And we're going to light cure it in the uh, lab of light for one minute. Um, there's, there are other units that you can use you know, for curing. Um, we like the lab of light here. Uh, everything's pre-programmed in there for, for Gradia. Uh, so it's just, uh, you know, it's, a, it's a marriage made in heaven. Once our, our primer is, is cured and done, um, proceed to the characterization um, with the Gradia gum. Um, the Gradia gum kit it comes in, it, you have three shades in the kit both light bodied and heavy bodied, um, and also some clear materials and a couple of uh, stains and highly, um, highly uh, characterized uh, vibrant stains. So I like to start with the light body material in the inner dental area. Um, I usually use uh, the, the number two, which is the medium pink. Um, and you know, simply it's a light medium and, and dark pink that's available and the White body again is matched to the heavy body. Um, I like using the white body in the inner dental areas because it, it, it has a nice flowability to it. Um, you're able to, to tuck it in there really well. Um, and you, know, you, you eliminate the chance of any voids um, in those areas that, that you might not be able to see right away until after it's cured. Um, so we'll go around the whole bridge and apply uh, the, the light body material to uh, all the inner dental spaces. Um, and that's going to get light cured uh, for uh, 90 seconds. So, and then, yeah, this, I'm sorry, the thing I failed to mention is that as, as you're going along, um, just tack cure it every, every once in a while for two, two to five seconds on, under the lava light. Um, you know, that, that freezes your material. So, you know, you're not chancing that it's going to run um, anywhere on you. So where, where you put it is where it's going to stay. Um, and, it, and it, you know, if you're a ceramist like I am, you know, you're, you're so used to overbuilding things um, with composites, you know, obviously that's not, that's not necessary. So, um, you know, it's different. It's just a different mindset to get into um, that you, you know, Put it, put it where you need it, tack it in place, it stays there, and you're going to get out of the machine um, what you put into it. Uh, after our light, um, light body material is, is cured, um, we're going to get ready to apply our heavy body. Now, one thing I will note about the heavy body material is that it's, it's very, very thick, it's very viscous. Um, so uh, some might find it a little difficult to use, um, but if you use, I would very 
strongly suggest use of the uh, Gradia modeling, modeling liquid. Um, it'll prevent the, the material from sticking to your instrument. Um, and again, you know, use anything that you find comfortable working with. Um, I'm just using a spatula and um, I really like that silicone um, instrument, silicone tipped instrument there. Um, I believe they're made by American Dental and they come in different shapes. Um, and you can really um, kind of work the material uh, around and, and push it where you need to push it with the silicone and, and, and the material won't stick to that. Here to, to see how, how stiff the material is. Um, I'll put it on a ceramic dish. You can put it on a glass plate. You can put it on a mixing pad. Um, again, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you like uh, to work with. Um, and I'll usually take a little modeling liquid and just press it into the material and manipulate the material a little bit before I start uh, applying it to the bridge, spread it out on the, on the plate, you know, get it into a, a thinner, uh, more, uh, an easier um, dimension in order, in order to pick it up with your instrument and, and apply it. Um, so you're gonna apply the heavy body to your bridge, you know, however you need it to be. Um, again, tack cure it as you go along. Um, and then at the, at the very end, I'm gonna use the, the light body number three. And the light body number three uh, specifically is, 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 is lighter in, in color, a little more translucent uh, pink shade. Uh, I like to highlight the free gingival margin with that and also the incisor of the pillar. Um, you'll, you'll see a lot of beautiful work being done out there by some really talented technicians um, on how they characterize their work, uh, both in ceramics and in, in composite material. Um, and, that, and that's how we learn. Right? We, we, we look at what other people are doing. We, uh, you know, sometimes we, we gravitate to our certain techniques, um, but, you know, some, I, I was always a believer in, you know, you, you grab a little bit of this from someone and, and a little bit of that from someone else. And you put it together and come up with your own little little formula. Um, so uh, tend not to over characterize the pink a little bit, you know, too much. I, I've just seen a lot of that out there. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't think that's really necessary. And I've I've actually gotten some feedback from our clients about over characterizing the pink. Um, so I, I tend to uh, do a little less rather than more. Um, before it goes into the light for curing or into the lab of light for curing, um, you're gonna take some air barrier gel and you're gonna apply a thin coat of air barrier gel over everything that you've just applied. Um, cover all your pink and um, that'll uh, prevent the oxy oxygen innovation layer from forming on, on the bridge during the, during the curing. Um, and we're gonna go into the lab of light for three minutes, I believe, yes, three minutes. After the cure, um, we're gonna scrub off that, that layer of, of barrier gel that we just applied. Um, and this is the bridge right out of the uh, curing unit. And you can see the characterization, the different shades of pink, uh, the darker pink interdentally, the lighter pink, the free gingival margin. Um, you can also use that on a root eminence area. Um, if you'd like to, you know, characterize that a bit. Um, there's, there's also a clear material uh, that comes with the kit uh, that might be useful for creating some depth of, of color in areas like that that you can use. Uh, so it's just, again, it's a matter of preference. Um, experiment with the kit, see what's best for you, see what you like, see what your doctor's like. And again, we're just going to finish the, the gradient material with our um, standard carbide bars and, and disc. And we're gonna get it ready for stain and glaze. And once all our finishing is done, okay, um, again, we're gonna microblast with 20 micron. I'm sorry, that should be 50 micron. 50 micron aluminum oxide. Um, we're gonna clean it and dry it. And we're gonna apply a thin layer of optic glaze to the, to the whole surface, both teeth and pink. Um, optic glaze comes in two viscosities, heavy and, and regular. Um, again, you know, try both, see what you, see what you like. 
Um, the heavy will tend to, I think, fill in uh, your, your, your embrasures or your interdental areas a little bit too much. Um, so you want to avoid any kind of puddling. So your, your restoration stays very individual. Uh, so I, I like to use the thinner material. And we just use a couple of shades um, in order to characterize the case. Uh, we have the red, a uh, little the orange uh, optic glaze color that we're going to use, violet, and, and a little bit of white. You don't need to, um, you know, cure your, your glaze before you start applying your color or your stain. Um, and, you know, being a ceramist, I like to, you know, play around a little bit. Um, and again, you, you know, I, some of these things I did just for demonstration purposes, but others, I think, really add some life to the case. Um, you know, you can add a little bit of white to your cuss tips. You can add a little bit of the orange interproximally. Uh, and you know it's it's gonna it's gonna dry a little bit, but not fully cure. So once you put it on there, you have you have a little bit of time to manipulate it, because um, just ambient light will start to set it. So uh, you want to be careful. But you know, again, you, it, it's not gonna final cure until you you know put it through um, another cycle in the in the box. Um, you know a little bit of stain on the occlusal. Uh, again, experiment and, and play around with it. Um, and see what you like to do. Um, put the whole bridge back in the lab of light for 90 seconds. And this is what our finished case looks like. Um, so just real quick, you can see, put a little white check line on number eight there, just a little bit of the orange stain down the center of the tooth. Again, just, you know, I, I would not, do this on a regular basis. It's just there for demonstration purposes and to show the effect. Uh, if you look at number 10, number 10, you can notice the translucency that is, is evident and both on the material and with a little bit of help from the optic glaze color, just a little bit of violet or a little bit of blue paint it in those mammalon areas and really help enhance um, the material. The Trusana has a really natural translucence to it. Um, so as your incised ledge gets thinner, um, it's just it's just naturally translucent. Um, it's just it's an amazing amazing material. Um, you can use a, a use a little bit of red um, interdentally as well, just to create some veining, and you can get as crazy as you want, or you can do as little. As, as you want in order to characterize, it. you know, be, be assured that you're gonna get a, a beautiful result, um, you know, just, just by doing your, your, your finishing and your, and your glazing. Um, and again, you can see the translucency along the inside of the ledge. Uh, and, and just, just the, the gradation of, of color throughout the, uh, throughout the bridge from the, uh, from the cervical to the inside. Um, Again, not, not something that I would recommend, but just something that if you had to, excuse me, if you had to characterize a, uh, you know, say you were doing a smaller case um, and somebody was really looking to have you know, a tooth look natural and characterized, it's, it's possible to do it. Um, and again, if you were, um, you know, when we first started using the material, we were using it for, um, you know, for printing denture teeth uh, and just think of the possibilities of customizing denture teeth. Uh, with with this kit and, and using Trusana denture teeth, uh, and then beautiful result that you will you will get for that, that with that material. Uh, so we're just showing each quadrant. Uh, again, that interdental, the darker pink in the, in, the, in those interdental areas might be too strong, um, but once it gets in the mouth, you, you know um, you know things tend to tend to blend and disappear in the mouth. Uh, because the you know the lighting is is different, uh, so uh, again just you know try things, experiment, and um, you know have have fun with it. Uh, once the case is finished, uh, we're going to prepare it for uh, bonding or looting of of your R tie bases into the bridge. Uh, here's where you want to check your path of insertion that I mentioned earlier. As you can see, the that one implant in the uh, number seven area 
is uh, you know, severely, or not severely, but quite tilted to, uh, to the distal. Um, so, you know, you may be able to, depending on the case, be able to, you know, bond or, or loot all these together at one shot. Um, but I chose to do it in two stages. Um, I, I felt like I had a good path of insertion on the remaining three tie bases. Uh, so we're going to do it in, in two separate stages. Uh, so we're taking we're taking that uh, tie base off of the uh, in, uh, off the abutment in uh, the number seven area. Just going to cover uh, the the screw access hole with a little bit of wax. Um, you can use um, Teflon tape or or pretty much anything that you you know, normally used to block out access holes when cementing implant crowns. Um, you know, anything will really will really work here with again, whatever, whatever you are comfortable with. Um, again, access holes with wax, Teflon tape, whatever material of your choice. Um, and here's where I just want to reiterate the select grip uh, surface texture that is uh, put on the tie bases um, by desk. Um, it, it really enhances the bond strength. Um, so you're, you, know, you can feel a little bit more comfortable um, knowing that you're gonna have a really good, uh, good bond to that. I just use a simple powder, powder and liquid technique. Um, I'm using a, a PMMA uh, acrylic um, that's made by an annex tent. Um, I will create a little bit of space inside the bridge um, to allow room for for the acrylic that I'm adding. Um, so you can you can also you know manually undercut the area if you like, but um, acrylic will bond chemically to the to the Trisana material. Um, so you can uh, again you feel confident that you're going to get a good bond here. And this is where you want to work a little bit quickly. You want to get each hole filled um, and the bridge seated on the model. Um, and we're just going to cure it in, in the pressure pot. Um, I didn't repeat the second phase of that because it's just repetition. Um, so what I did was I, I cured the three, uh, came back um, and made sure my fit was good and then cured that final tie base using the, um, the same exact procedure. So here's our final case. Base is cured in, um, glazed, um, and, and, and ready for the ready for delivery. Um, again, just, just highlighting some of the um, different areas of characterization. Um, I think using this material for cases like this, um, you know, back in the day, you know, what we were left to do was usually wax, wax a case, pack it, invest it, uh, boil it out, you know, and inject acrylic into it. It was just a huge time suck to, to do something like that. And, you know, really it was very difficult to make it profitable, you know, and it was, that's, that's why, uh, you know, other labs became so popular with producing Temporary because they, you know, they, they found a way to do it um, very productively and efficiently. Um, but this, using these two materials, these, these two, you know, the components of this and, and a Trusana material together has really made um, producing an implant temp like this um, quite, quite possible and quite cost effective. Um, and I would assure you that your, your client you know, it's going to be extremely happy and eventually your patient um, to have something like this. Um, and, th and this is meant um, to be to be worn long term. Um, it's it's not for, you know, hold, hold me over until the case is done. Um, you know, I think, you know, once, once something like this is done and the patient's wearing it, um, again, they're not in such a big hurry uh, to get their final restoration done. Uh, you know, so, you know, Maybe that helps you on the on the zirconia end. Um, if, you're, if you're doing this in zirconia or, or chrome cobalt or whatever you might be doing it in, um, you know, gives gives us a little bit more work and time. The patient's wearing something strong. You know, he's not calling the doctor every other week to say, "Oh, my temporary broke," and the doctor's calling you. 
uh, hey, you know, when, when can I get my case back? So just, you know, you can, you can feel more confident that you're, number one, it's, it's stronger. It's gonna be it's less wear resistant um, or uh, much less wear resistant, or it, I'm sorry, it has less wear to it. Um, and then also um, that it's gonna have much less water absorption than um, contemporary uh, or regular acrylics um, and also PMMEs. And we, we didn't put much pink on the lingual side um, just because of the, you know, how far lingual those implants were. So we were just trying to keep it to minimum thickness uh, without you know, really, uh, you know, getting quite bothersome to the patient, um, you know, being, being annoying there. So I'd like to thank um, John and Henry Schein for, for putting this uh, program together. Um, you know, education is, is difficult today uh, for dental technicians. You know, we, I don't know what it's like in your area, but in where, where we're at here in the Philadelphia area, um, there's no more formal education for us. Um, you know, we really have to, you know, it's, it's upon us to teach ourselves and educate ourselves and, and make ourselves better dental technicians. So when companies like Zahn um, can reach out, and put programs forth like this, um, I think it's really a benefit um, for, for all of us. Um, so with that being said, um, just some con concluding remarks. Um, we first started using the Trisana material about six months ago. Uh, we didn't envision the amazing results that we have been achieving. Um, it's strong, it's easy to use and finish, and truly a very aesthetic material. We're all very familiar with the techniques and workflows um, used to print dental resins. So it's not, it's not disruptive to your current workflow in your lab or your environment in your lab. Uh, so using a material like Trusana is, is really uh, a great thing. Um, you no longer have to occupy a milling machine um, to mill your PMMA tents, um, no broken burrs, no mismills. And combining it with the best line of uh, implant components, um, which has the most comprehensive selection of 100% compatible parts available anywhere. Um, your restoration is gonna be very cost effective, FDA approved, and have a lifetime warranty on those abutments um, and components. Please don't hesitate to consider deaths for all your implants. Um, for navigating your way through dental or through digital production can be daunting especially for some of my age. But how we transfer our traditional restorations into the digital counterparts can easily be done with predictable workflows. And that's, I think, what we get with, um, with Trusana and this. So again, I'd like to thank everyone at Shine and Zahn. Um, I'd also like to thank my teammates here at the lab who helped me with this project. Um, the CAD room, print tech, and our customer service and client fulfillment manager, what a fancy title she has, April, um, for helping me uh, put this presentation together. Um, really, it wouldn't be possible without her. Um, most of all, I want to thank you, all the attendees, for joining today. Um, as a technician all my life, I know what it's like being tied to the bench. Um, I'm still tied to the bench after all these years. Um, it's a pleasure to get an opportunity to do something like this. I know you all have a bunch of work pans waiting for you when you get back or a bunch of phone calls to make. Um, so go ahead. Again, thank you for joining. And I hope you, uh, hope you found this informative. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Tony. We do have two questions, if that's okay. Do you sure. have a moment for them? Yep. Okay, so the first one is, other than Gradia, is there another composite material you would recommend for characterization? Sure, Sam. We, we used to use um, uh, culture, um, uh, power material. Um, again, like your material, um, perfectly, perfectly compatible to use. Um, another product that comes to mind is um, uh, the Anextent material. Um, you know, it's, uh, again, quite, quite a selection of, of uh, um, shades and um, different um, 
different levels of viscosity. So any of those materials are great. And there is just one more. Um, are all curing lights compatible with Gradia? Um, one thing that you want to consider, um, if not using uh, the, the lava light from Gradia or from GC, I'm sorry, um, is the wavelength of your light source. So you want to make sure that that wavelength is somewhere between 400 and 430 uh, nanometers. Um, that's the, the most important thing. I mean, other than the time that it's in the machine, um, it's the wavelength of your light source that's important. So um, just double check that. Um, you should be able to, whatever manufacturer um, you have, you should be able to find that um, either on their website or you know, from technical support from that company.